Good evening, good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Jay, and like always, I got a scripture and a prayer. And deep down for y'all, something that could be able to touch your soul this morning or evening. Excuse me, guys. And we're going to be coming out of Psalm 59 and 16. It says, but I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. There is power in your testimony. When you have times of trouble, you can remember the things that God has brought you through, the strength that he has given you, the things that he has helped you through. So the thing I want you to remember is in your times of trouble, don't turn to the addiction. Don't turn to your 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 friends. Turn to God and he'll give you the answer to be able to solve the issue and not to sugarcoat it and not to put a bandaid on it, but to be able to get some true deliverance of that situation. Amen. Amen. Dear Father, thank you, God, for the today, Lord. God, just please bless us, Lord. Bless us in advance, God. God, we just thank you for this interview. Let something tonight be said that have someone say, what can I do to be saved? God, let us be able to expand our territory. God, let us be able to reach the unreached, to be able to uh, reach the unteachable. And God, let us be able to just have a great show today to be able to learn something today, God. God bless all the listeners. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice that that they can be able to get deliverance, a, a financial breakthrough, that they can get healing. Whatever they desire of you, Lord, God, I just ask you to do it in the midst of what they're going through, God, and just make it whole again. God, I thank you. I glorify you. We said it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 You can find me. So welcome, everybody. We're um, first going to go and talk about something right quick. I have a big announcement. Boop, boop, boop. Big announcement is I have new music coming out. Woo! Before I had to tell y'all where y'all can find me, I have to tell y'all we have new music. Come, I have new music coming out. It's coming out October 20th. And um, you could be able to find it on all digital platforms. You'll be able to follow, uh, check out all my social media so you could be able to know when it's coming out. I'll probably post it tomorrow or the next day with the link to pre order and to pre save. So go ahead and check out my social media at Anointed Jalon on social media, um, all social media platforms at Facebook. On Facebook, check out Pastor Jalon Calhoun and get all my um, information. And you go listen to my previous songs, Renew My Praise, and Jesus, You Make Me Happy on all digital platforms. Yeah, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Chris Johnston, St. Chris J here. Um, soon I'll be able to announce something, so just okay. keep me in prayer. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, you can find me at stchrisj.com um, as well as stchrisj on Facebook and Instagram. And please go get um, Tracing After You, uh, which is on all digital media outlets, as well as go get some merchandise, some Worship or Die merchandise or King Worship Die merchandise on my website. So, yeah. And then, yeah, I got some other announcements, too, later. We'll see. Praise the Lord. You have some other announcements? Uh, yeah, but once I officially launch it, then I'll announce it. Okay. Go ahead. All right. And uh, before I get to you, DW, I had to go ahead and just say, um, everybody, we gotta remember the love child, Dr. Marvinetta Clay, the love child of Etta James and uh, Marvin Gaye. Put their names together is Marvinetta Clay. So go Ooh. ahead and check out Dr. Marvinetta Clay on drmarvinettaclay.com. Go download her song. Don't download her song on um, all social media platforms. Um, I think. Her uh, new song actually just got re-released with our uh, label, Amp Records. Check out Amp Records on social media, on Instagram. Um, and They Don't Know was re-released on there on all social media platforms. Go ahead and check that out. Dr. Marvinetta Clay, They Don't Know. Um, and check out Worship Forever. And we have a few new tracks coming from Dr. Marvinetta Clay that's going to be out this world. Um, everybody's been waiting for Fly Away. It's been a long wait, but it's going to be worth the wait. And um, so good. So definitely stand by. Check out drmarvinettaclay.com. Wonderful. And I am DW, the DW Experience. And I have some exciting news. Guess what, you guys? Guess what? 
Oh, you're talking to us? Or the, the yeah, list? yeah, just, just oh, look okay. my so, yes. this is. This yes. is my third time doing the show. Woo! Give it up for number three. Nobody <laughs> excited with me. Bless your heart. I mean, listen, I'm just excited to be with you guys. You know, I, I'm new to this. I'm excited to be interviewing our guests tonight. And, you know, first time I was nervous, second time I got past it. And it just hit me today like, you know, this is my third interview and, and it's going very well. So that's my exciting news. But um, uh, so much more in store, so many exciting things, music, all that great stuff. But um, you can follow me at the DW Experience on Instagram, on Facebook and all that good stuff. So uh, congratulations to me, third time, show number three. Hey, so once you- I'm excited it, about it. I, <laughs> it's the little things. He said, if, hey, he said listen, I'm the, over the small things. Hey, Chris, uh, okay. your third time? Do you remember your third interview? Who was it? Be specific. Amen. I've been doing this for what? Almost a year, two years? One or two years? Going on two years, yeah. You don't remember your third time? I could tell y'all, honestly, I don't remember mine. It, 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 it was it, so it, many in between. Years years now. You're right. But, you know, one thing I could say, you know, make it biblical. You had one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, I'm not just saying, don't really despise really small beginnings. Remember this oh, moment. Gosh. Remember this show two years from now. Yeah, two years from now, 20 years from now, you'll be able to look back and be like, I remember I used to be nervous. Remember? Right? And we, you know, all that, and, and we all were, you know, because yeah. I think for, for the Chris's first few interviews, he was just quiet. Well, never mind. I'm done. Anyway, so with that being said, we're going to we're going to go ahead and introduce our guest, Mr. Brian Poppins. Poppin. 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 That's what I said. Pop in. Pop in. That's what I said. He popping. Poppin. He popping. Brian. Brian Poppin. There you go. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's going on? Welcome. Uh, you got it so, right, man. Pop in. Pop, pop in. in. Right? Thank you. Because he pop in. He but pop like, you know, like, in. Some, some people put an S on the end of everything. So pop in is cool. Still work. Got you. Okay. Oh, pop in. <laughs> but he pop in though. So if you don't know who this is, he, the phenomenal singer, Brian Poppin, we have him on, on the show today. And um, I just want to go to the interview. And we're going to music later. So I have to do an icebreaker question with you. Icebreaker question is this. Okay. Do you still have a hobby that you get nervous in? A hobby? I mean, I get nervous talking to people. I actually see my thing is like ministry is something I love to do. So like going up on a stage, let's say and ministering to people or doing music. I mean, you could say performing, but for me, it's not performance. It's, you know, it's, it's worship and it's, it's praise and, and all that. And we're just kind of like connecting on a heart level. And hopefully my testimony through the music will encourage somebody. But I'm more nervous like one-on-one, -on -one, like afterwards when I talk to like one person or if I'm, if I'm in a group of like five people, I get more nervous about that. So I don't know, that's not really a hobby, I mean, I, I have hobbies, but it's like fun stuff, man. I don't get nervous about it. Like I, I, I get. I'm, I'll give you an example. <laughs> roller skating. I, I get nervous. I like oh, roller no. skating. <laughs> but let, if I fall, I told my kids yeah. I'm gonna roller skating. If I fall, just leave, let, leave me there. Leave me there yeah, like no. I'm at the office because I just know. Leave me there. Because <laughs> uh -huh. I'm just nervous yeah, no. to fall. Yeah, I, I, but but I don't like. The way I am is if I can do something, I'm going to give it 110 and I'm going to give it my all. But if I know before I get into something that it's not going to end well for me, I don't really touch it. <laughs> Got you. Okay. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get out there and roller skate if I knew I was going to not be able to get that, do that well. But I, okay. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay roller skating, but, you know, every once in a while, everybody got to fall, right? <laughs> as long as you get back up, right? Yeah, and the older I get, man, it hurts to get up. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I wanted to ask, um, I, I want to first get with familiar familiarities. I, I can't say nothing tonight. I want to just be able to get the, 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 the no knows and all the information about you out the way. So where is your hometown and where do you reside now? My hometown would be, um, I was born and raised in Middletown, New Jersey. And I reside now in Nashville, Tennessee, and have been here for almost, man, probably 14 years. Wow. Yeah. So I have to follow up on that. What made you move to Tennessee? Honestly, uh, just felt like I was released from a Jersey, be the people I was around and, and the ministry I was a part of for, you know, I got saved at a certain church up there in Jersey and I was part of the music ministry and it taught me a lot. Um, but I started traveling and, um, I just felt like it was time. Uh, and I always knew I was going to move down to the Nashville area to connect with people, uh, business wise, but also ministry wise. And just, um, you know, see, it just felt in my heart, like that was the right move. And my wife uh, didn't like New Jersey. Um, <laughs> so, so that was like one. another part of the puzzle. Shout out to Jersey. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, it wasn't really that she didn't like Jersey. She's from Indiana. So like, you know, she's a Midwest girl and it was just different. And like the church we were going to was like a big, um, like a mega church. And she was used to like a small, like hometown, like local church where you knew everybody and it was just very different. And then I started traveling a lot. So like she was home, you know, a lot uh, without me. So yeah, just anyway, I mean, those are all just little, little pieces, but you know, like I've learned in life, like sometimes God starts like allowing all this stuff to, to, to almost like burst or boil. And then that's your decision. Like, he, he he lines it all up for you to make a choice. And if you don't make the right choice, then obviously you keep repeating cycles, but sometimes that's your cue to make a move, you know? And so we, yeah, we moved to Nashville and man, it was the best decision we ever made. Hey man. So what, that. one thing I could say um, is what was, I guess you could say the age that you knew that mu you really love music and that you wanted to actually pursue mu doing music. Hmm. That's actually a great question because I started learning music when I was like, I think I was five. Yeah. Five years old. My mom, my mom was a choir director and she was a piano teacher. And so she taught my brother, she taught my sister and I was next in line and I learned piano under her. And then I could sight read um, music really well. I couldn't memorize, but I could sight read really well. And so I was playing classical music and she trained me. I mean, and I say trained because she did. I mean, she trained me in like the old hymns of the church and wanted me to learn classics and classical and Mozart and Bach and all this stuff. But if you took that sheet music away or the hymnal away, man, it was like creatively I went blank. I couldn't memorize, I couldn't play by ear. And a lot of people in the church were raised differently where, you know, they learned by ear, but, but I didn't, I learned by the book. And, and then, uh, I was prayed over, uh, at this church we attended. And that was at when I was 11 years old and literally like that night I could memorize music. And I remember like, we kind of like did a little test and my mom like closed this Mozart Sonata and I just closed my eyes and I played like, I think it was like 32 pages of that thing. And then I cried. And honestly, I, I remember it literally saying, God, whatever you've done, I surrender this gift to you. Use me. And, and I'll never forget that moment. I mean, it was like I was 11. And it was really just the beginning of what God was starting in my life. But that's when I fell in love, I think, with music. But I didn't really know who I was, what style of music I was going to fall in love with. I just loved music because music moves you. Um, but it was later on in life, like when I was, see, my parents moved to Florida when I was 18. And then I, I met a uh, music producer that was a, he was dating Shaka Khan at the time. And his best friend was Stevie Wonder. And he 
just wanted like new blood in his life, like fresh blood. I mean, it was weird how we met, but long story short, God kind of ordained it. And he was all about R&B and old school and funk and real music, you know, like Bootsy Collins playing the bass. And so he, he brought me in, man. I, I would commute to New York City and I every day um, would work with him and I would learn and he would school me on how to record and how to track bass. And, you know, I'd be like trying to like edit out all of the like the grit that was in between you know the notes and he'd be like no no man leave that in you know that's the good stuff and i was like okay you know so he he like really really introduced me to music that i was not i mean i was raised around like gospel and christian music but but i wasn't raised around like you know the, the funk and the old school soul music and stuff and and so he kind of introduced me to that and i and i really really i just i just fell in love with music and i found like something that I was really, really connected with. And when we moved, you know, you mentioned when I moved to Nashville, that's when I realized that I was kind of not fulfilling my calling. And even though God had introduced me with, uh, you know, this really unique relationship, it was just to birth where, where I was supposed to be placed musically and where my ministry uh, musically was supposed to fit. And so that's when I started, you know, really writing and falling in love more so with gospel music and finding my niche. I just wanted to ask right there, just you're, you're kind of leading to the question, but just knowing yeah. the background that you have, like you're classically trained, you've come in contact with, you know, the funk, the R&B yeah. and, and growing up in church, you see a lot of church musicians and singers that yeah. um, if you look into R&B and a lot of our, our favorite gospel tunes, a lot of them are, are people who come from the church. So my yeah. question to you is, with all of the talent that you have, why gospel music? Why did you choose gospel music as opposed to, you know, doing other forms of music? And 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 it, it seems like you're so talented. Um, by the way, mm -hmm. I love Beautiful Savior. I had a chance to listen to that. Oh, thank you. And some of your other music. And it's catchy, but there's just, there's just such an anointing. Like, I, I literally mm -hmm. just you know, get chills listening to it. So I'm just curious to know wow. what made you choose gospel or Christian music. I mean, I, I mean, I know this sounds cliche, but it's like, I don't really feel like I chose gospel. Like there was nothing else I felt I could do without my heart really being in it. I mean, yes. And I remember sitting down, like when I first signed with E1, um, when like I first moved down to Nashville, like a, a year and a half after that, I signed with E1. And I remember them like really having a one-on-one a -on -one with me, like saying, look, and they said the same thing. They said, man, you're, you're a talented cat. You know, you could do anything you really put your mind to. You could play this, you could play that. You could do a classical instrumental record, but what do you want to focus on? Where, where's your heart at? And, and honestly, you, you know, you really have to focus on one thing. Otherwise you're doing so many different things that, you know, um, you know, you just, you, you, you you're not going to succeed in, in doing 80 million things, you know, it's like, so it really was, I, I didn't have a choice. I mean, it's just, it was what I love. I love the fact that you can connect with someone, encourage someone, sing about your story, sing about your testimony, sing about the hurt, the pain, the loss that you feel it in a song. And then also take that weight off and direct it and say, God, Without you, I'd be nothing. Without you, I, I couldn't. I'm thankful that I just have breath to breathe. So I think that was, you know, that was a pivotal moment. Um, but it, it's also the my style is just my style. I mean, forget a profile. It's like, you know, what I am and what I love and what I like and what I do is me. And even though I could do other things, it wouldn't necessarily be me. And I mean, even I've even been asked the question, why don't you do contemporary Christian music? And I'm like, why? And they'd be like, well, why not? And I'm like, well, are you saying that because I'm white? <laughs> like, I don't understand the question. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't get it. Like, wow. And, I, and I'm just saying that back to them because that's not me. That's not who I am. And you know, I can't sit still when I play. I've got to shout. I've got to move. I got to jump up and down. And like I remember, I played at Bishop Jake's church the day that uh, what's his name was there? Um, Tyler Perry. What's his name? Tyler Perry was there, and he gave like a million dollars to the youth center. 
And then this praise broke and like for 45 minutes, everybody starts running around. Then Tyler Perry goes up on stage, lays hands on Jake's, he falls out. Oh, I was there. I mean, I was supposed to play like right then and there. Then all that happened. And like, you know, everybody that had a suit on and tie, it's all crooked, all messed up, you know, hair all a mess and Bishop's is sweaty and he gets up and he's supposed to preach and, and he look comes over to me and he says, you know, he gives me like this word because at that point in my life, I was about to like claim bankruptcy. I was, you know, contemplating getting a divorce. I mean, just all these weights. And yet my song that was out and starting to connect with people and become a theme song for them was called I Can Make It. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense, but it was a prophetic word for me. And, um, you know, just like everybody else, we have to trust and we have to believe. But I remember that moment and, uh, you know, I'll never forget that because that that changed everything for me. I mean, this, this was like, it's not just something I sing. Like, I don't just sing other people's music and and people don't pitch me songs and I pick what I think is a hit. I mean... I do my own music and most times it's like God prophetically speaking a word to me that I'm going through or dealing with and then it becomes, you know, a theme song for other people and man, there's nothing better than that to know that you're connecting with people and all that and I, I'm just so honored to be able to do this. Uh, but I'll never forget uh, Fred Hammond was there like in the second row at Jake's church and he texted a friend of mine that was with me. And he goes, who's this, uh, what do you call me, a, a white tribbit? <laughs> <laughs> white tie tribbit. <laughs> but I took it as a compliment, man, because, you know, I mean, there's a lot of gospel artists that I really admire um, and that I really, you know, would love to work with. There's some I've met that I wish I never met, too, but that's another show. Oh, <laughs> very much another I, show. I could, I could <laughs> test them. I could you testify too. that one. Oh, Jesus. But that's but not, look, look, people, that. people are humans, right? We're right, all human. Right. right? True. So you never know, A, who you catch on a bad day, because I have bad days. True. And then you also, you know, I mean, it, that's like not like just gospel artists. I mean, that's anyone. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've admired a lot of people in life, people that I wanted to learn from and thought were successful or whatever. And then I meet them and I'm like, man, they're not nice, <laughs> you know, so just is what it is. You pattern your life. My dad always said, you know, you pattern your life how you want to pattern your life. And he patterned his life completely opposite of his dad. Because his dad was, like, abusive and he had no relationship with him. And I can't even imagine that because my dad raised us to be so affectionate and to communicate and to be so relational. And, you know, he shifted that, that, that. I don't know what you call it, a generation or, or, or generational curse. I mean, he, he shifted it. Well, you know, one thing I wanted to just say with that, and, and it goes into the whole aspect where it's, it's, it's so easy for people, you know, cause I'm thinking about what you said and it's so true. People have bad days. I probably rub some people off the wrong and my heart probably wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, wasn't right. you know, right. trying to do it. And but you think one thing I, I do look at as well is that it's not a performance when you are doing ministry, because even though it's a stage, even though there's a microphone, yeah. even at the end of the day, it's spreading the gospel through song. And yeah. I think some people sometimes forget that point. And that's where the, the spirit is in a line when you meet them. It's not on a God God fearing, you know, let's be able to worship God moment is kind of yeah. like moment because sometimes people go through selfish times and you don't you never know what people are going through so yeah. you have an excellent point on that but one thing i wanted to ask going back to what you were saying about um the question of why you, they um why are you in gospel and ask you why you don't go to ccm um one thing i wanted to ask is do you believe that that should even be a difference because i feel like as a whole I feel like mm -hmm. there's, I think we, me and you were just talking about that before the show, about this whole division. And we're all yeah. supposed to be worshiping the same God and we all have our different tones. You know, my song is different than your song. Your song's different than Chris's song. Chris's song's different than DW, but we all talking about the source. So yeah. what makes 
what makes that big difference you know i never believe that it should be even a difference between it because we're it's not like we're talking about a whole different topic we're talking about right. the same topic just maybe sped up a little different you know tempo a little different and some different arrangements but you know what is your thoughts on that i mean if you want my truthful answer which i always try to be i think in an ideal perfect world, what you're saying would be perfect, but it's not a perfect world. Um, so therefore people like what they like. And, you know, why do, why do some people go to a Baptist church and why do some people go to a charismatic non-denominational church? I mean, why do some people, why are they tied to a, a Lutheran I mean, it's more styles of worship, really. They feel comfortable. They like it. They like the preacher. They like his delivery. They like his style. So, I mean, I agree with you. And I think there should just be, let's say, Christian music or whatever you want to call it. Um, and some stations that I've done radio interviews for try to do that. I mean, they try to bring just a, just a eclectic, diverse type of music, you know, from Lecrae to... Toby Mac to whatever, you know what I mean? But <laughs> I think uh, I think that, you know, there's politics involved in a lot of the bigger radio stations. So there's markets and statistics and, you know, uh, just like Nike's gonna go, go for a certain genre of people when they're marketing. I mean, that, that's really what a lot of these radio stations are doing as well with, with their commercials and, you know, their listeners, but all in all, man, I'm with you. I'm with you. If you know how to make it work, let me know. Cause the reason why I say that is because I think I was talking to Jokia. Um, yeah, it was. And she was saying, I'm not that gospel sound. I'm my own sound, you know, but people yeah. expect, you know, I'm not a, I'm not those squall. I can't squall. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to throw that out there. I'm not a squaller. I, I mean, I um, can't either, so, but yeah, so, <laughs> you know, um, but I believe I'm I do. Squaller music that is centered about God and it be able to yeah. be a testament of my heart. And I think that was the reason why I was saying that because a lot of upcoming artists, especially in this new generation, they're not the typical sound. You know, they're yeah. not that typical sound of, you know, CCM or gospel. It's yeah. a whole new sound. Well, no, and, and actually like while I, well, while I was being, um, I don't even know what you would call it, but when I was with E1, and I was with them for a couple years. Um, that division of E1 fell apart, which was like the E1 worship division. And that's where they put me. And then they threw me over to the Light Records division. And Light Records, their team of people had been working Jonathan McReynolds for like almost two years by that time. And so now they've got me, who's a new artist. I am what I am. You know, how do you market me? How do you approach this? Blah, blah, blah. It's going to take some work. And 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 they really didn't have the the people and all this stuff. So, like, you know, they, they've been working Jonathan for two years, and Jonathan still didn't really hit. And now, obviously, you can't even imagine those times with him because he shifted the sound, really. I mean, it doesn't matter because he wasn't really radio friendly, whatever that is. Um, but I think he's so authentic, you know? I mean, like, what what really made people just win him over, or what won him over was like at live events, whether it be Stellar's or wherever, a small, you know, event. Um, he would just like come off the cuff with his lyrics, you know. I mean, it would just be just so unique, and just him and the guitar, like him playing guitar, isn't necessarily the normal, you know, expected look. And so I think that's awesome. I mean. Mm. whatever man i'm all about diversity and what you think should be i always say why why should that be you know but i'm also still big on you know keeping things sanctified as far as i like tradition i, I really do i mean i i culturally like tradition i love culture and i love some of the basis of how culture was formed created and like why it is what it is and i mean i, I love I just I just love all of it. So I'm kind of like an authentic cat. Amen. And yeah. and and I want wanted to just follow up with just saying this. 
um, what advice would you give that upcoming artist? You know, there's a lot of upcoming artists. There's probably a lot of uh, art artists that's coming up that watch you and, you know, and really look up to you. So what would you tell them um, as encouragement and as w words of wisdom? I mean, I get asked that a lot. Uh, and a lot of people, when I was doing live events, of course, with COVID and all that for months now, but, you know, I would, I was one of the artists that would go back to my, we call it a product table, but I would go back to my product table and I would stay there for however long, an hour, hour and a half, 30 minutes. I mean, whatever it took until everyone that was at in line, you know, wasn't there anymore. And I would meet them. I'd hug on them. I'd talk to them and thank them for supporting me and my ministry. And one of the questions I'm usually asked is by other musicians or by other artists or singers that want to do what I'm doing, you know, say, how, how did you get to this point? Or how do I get to that point? Whatever this point is. But I mean, I think first of all, you have to be authentic. You have to be original. You have to showcase whoever you are, whatever you do in some form or fashion. So like I would always say, well, what do you do? I'm a singer. Okay, cool. Is there anything online where I can go and view how you sing? No. Okay. Have you put together a demo? Not really. But I've got some lyrics. I mean, like basic stuff is, you know, well, okay, put in the work. Find, if you don't play keys, find somebody that plays keys. If you need somebody that plays guitar, find someone that plays guitar. Hire somebody. Save some money. Find a producer that you like. Ask them to work with you. Like put one song together that, you know, features and focuses on your song that you wrote or whatever and that you really believe in. And then market it as much as you can online. Um, try to get eyes on it however you can. But for me, back in the day, I mean, you're talking, I've been doing this for 25 years full time now. So I would do any events, conferences, whatever it might be for free. I mean, money wasn't even an issue. Like, yeah, man, of course I'll be there. Absolutely. Time and place. Handshake. Done. I mean, it wasn't managers and booking agencies and all that stuff. It was like, man, I just want to minister to people. And when I got the opportunity, that led to, oh, you got to meet Pastor So-and-so. And, oh, you got to meet Pastor So-and-so. And then I met some pastor that met some pastor and introduced me some pastor. And then somehow I'm at some conference and Bishop Jakes is sitting on the front row. And then Bishop had me in and had me at conferences. I mean, like, that's how it progresses in some instances. For others, it's different. But for me, I mean, all I know is me and, and how, you know, God was able to work it out for me. But it doesn't mean it's easy. You know, you got to put in the work and you've got to believe not only in yourself, but you've got to believe you're called to this. Whatever you feel your ministry is, um, because it's hard, you know, man, it's hard. I mean, you've got to live a life of worship. You've got to live a life of prayer because people are going to cut you down, say you don't belong here. I mean, they're going to promise you the world, not deliver. And you still have mm. to remain tight with your relationship with God. And, you know, I, I mean, I, for me, like I, I still had a family too. So it was like, I wasn't this single guy, you know, I still had to take care of family and wife and kids and all that stuff. But for me, man, the more kids I had, the more God started blessing me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I mean, I got six kids and I'm the most blessed I've ever been. That's crazy. Cause I was scared to have one, one kid. And I was like, Oh, I don't know how I'm going to afford her, blah, blah, blah. And here I am with six. And it's like, man, God, you just provide. Amen. And I, I wanted to ask you, cause I love how you're, you're very transparent about um, just your life and, and your music and um, in doing some research about you, looking at your website, you have a beautiful quote uh, from James Taylor that just says, I believe musicians have a duty, a responsibility to reach out to share your love or pain with others. Um, so what I'd like to know from you, I always hear you about your ups and downs, but what is one dark time in your music career where you felt like giving up or turning away from music and how did you overcome that? I mean, yeah, just leading into what I was saying with that, I think it was a Sunday when I was there at Bishop Jakes' church. And that's when I Can Make It was really just starting to like kind of track at radio. Because up to that point, a lot of program directors had said, I'm not playing that 
and and um, so I didn't really feel like it was going to work for me, uh, you know, in this genre, let's just say. And and then Bishop Jakes got be behind it and started promoting it and telling people about it and how much he loved it. And then all of a sudden, program directors started playing it. But up to that point, you know, I was with a label that didn't really know how to market and represent me. Um, and the finances really weren't there behind me that needed to be behind me. So that was frustrating. Um, my live dates weren't really there, <coughs> excuse me, um, consistently. And that was my, you know, really my support to, to exist and live other than trusting God. And then that created frustrating vibes in the household, you know, like, so how are we going to support ourselves? How are we going to exist? How are we going to pay rent? Blah, blah, blah. And so that was all going on. And, and that my marriage was, was just difficult. And so many, I mean, I can just go on and on at how many things were hitting me all at once because that was hitting me all at once. Then the place where we were living, we had to get out of that situation. There was just no consistency. There was no peace. There's just stress from all different angles. And I literally found myself, you know, we mentioned performing and I, I do believe in excellence. I mean, I feel like you should give God your best. Amen. But it's a heart thing. I mean, it's a heart thing, right? Like this is all about a heart. That's the only sense you can make out of somebody that lived their life for Christ their whole life, tried to do their best, and they're going to heaven, right? And then Jesus is on the cross, and the guy that sinned his whole life was a thief, blah, blah, blah. As long as he believes, God says, you'll be with me in heaven. I mean, it, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, like all the things I gave up, like if you want to rationalize, you can't rationalize kingdom, right? I mean, it's, it's about your heart. And so I really just needed to gut out anything in my heart that was messing with me, pride, um, you know, whether it be jealousy, insecurities, dealing with rejection, like all that stuff. I just had to get my knees on the ground you know, I had to humble myself and I needed to worship through my mess and stop mm -hmm. putting so much pressure on myself to connect the dots, to work it out. And when I also prioritized my marriage and put God first and then my marriage and then my music and ministry, because I had it vice versa. I had God and then I, well, really, I think I had music and my ministry first, then God, and then my marriage. And I just had it backwards. But when I figured that out and God gave me the grace to figure that out, man, it was like I didn't have to fight so hard. And all of a sudden I boom, bump into this pastor and this pastor wants to start a record label. And then boom, you know, I mean, like the dots started being connected and there's no way I could have done it. Like there's no way. It's just his timing, his divine order, his timing. So yeah, man. I mean, I, there's so many almosts in my life. And then a lot of songs were written, like I Got Out was written right after all that was going on. So I Can Make It was during all that. And then that was a prophetic word that I, you know, I, I would make it. And then I Got Out was written after that because I looked back and I was like, man, I didn't claim bankruptcy. Look at my marriage. It's the best it's ever been. We just keep having kids because we love each other. We love our big family, blah, blah, blah. And look at my ministry. I mean, my ministry keeps growing and keeps connecting musically, blah, 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 like all this stuff. And I just was overwhelmed with his goodness and his grace and his mercy. And I mean, I can go on and on about it, man, but that that's the gist of it. I, I'm just, I'm really grateful and I'm thankful because I probably should have been sifted. I should have been taken out. I shouldn't have had a fifth chance or an eighth chance. And I feel like I'm just like everybody else. You got the anointing on your life, Doc. I yeah, felt that. Ah. Yeah, no. I felt Ooh. that. But watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I you, love you what you me. just said. You almost had me in tears. You don't understand that because, like, right? Because I was when they say there's power in the testimony. You don't. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know how many people are similar. That's similar. That's going through the yeah. exact same thing, or some are going through what you went through. And that's their yeah. current present right now. But so, Pastor Jay, wow. can we just can we just rem that word right there? Worship through your mess. Right. Mm, that was the word. Can we just that's the word? You know, 
I, I don't even need any credit from that. You can just, yeah. you know, send me a little side note. But, if, you know, <laughs> if you're listening to this on the replay or wherever, you can type that in the comments. Worship through your mess. That's such a good that's such good advice right there because a lot yeah. of times, you know, we pause right at the, the break of the blessing. It's like, it's not happening. So I just give up or I'm not getting yeah. it or nobody, everybody's, you know, everybody's sleeping on me. Everybody's hating on me. So I'm, I'm just going to give yeah. up. But I love what you just said. Like, you know what, yeah. no matter what's going on, I'm not going to lose my worship for you, God. I'm going to worship through my, cause they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Right. So it's yeah. like if we're in a mess, we got to worship yeah, and, right there. Yeah. And then like things that used to trip me out and I used to like get real stressed over or have anxiety over didn't trip me out anymore because I knew, oh, God's got that. Oh, that's nothing mm -hmm. for him. Oh, he, he did it before. He can do it. I mean, like, you know, like it built faith in me because I knew God had my back. And, and yes, I had some twists and turns and like right now with COVID, you know, we got to pivot for a moment and, and check ourselves and figure it out and we'll get through it together. But like, you know, in life, I've had my uppercuts and some unexpected punches and stuff, but it, it didn't take me out. And so it builds character, but it builds strength, not in me, but in him. And so you know, it, it encourages me through the process as well, because just like everybody else, you know, I live this journey and I believe and trust just like you, yet still see what I see and go through what I go through. Amen. Amen. Well, I got a question for you, man. Well, I have a few questions for you. So I'm going to start with the most serious one. Man, <laughs> one would be I actually. Uh... <laughs> I need to get a charger for my phone. I don't want to lose my battery here. Oh Lord, Ashley, how about this? We we're gonna go into yeah. a music break. Uh, we're going yeah, to a let's music do some break, music, and I'm gonna get my charger. And you, can, you go get your because right. we don't want you to die. So we're gonna oh, go ahead, oh Lord, and we're gonna go ahead and come out with "I Got Out," everybody. So oh, we'll Lord. see you guys in a minute, and yeah, see y'all in a minute. No matter what you're going through, he's going to make a way for you. Soon you're going to say, I got out. Hey! That's it.
he didn't even have to get you out. But he still gets you out. Oh, yeah. 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 Amen. That was I Got Out by Mr. Brian Poppin, y'all, because he be popping. <laughs> <laughs> he popping. Yeah, man, so, we back. We are back, and Chris have a few questions. I got like 12. He be oh. a, have a few questions. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> I ain't going to have to. Well, but my main question was uh, to you was for those artists who have, in a sense, lost their way, their authentic self, and have just gone with you know whatever their label is telling them and become what you was like you said, kind of like a diva in a sense. How do they get back to that? I know one way you say was worship your way through it, which is of course one of the most important ways. But what other practical advice would you give to those artists? Like, hey, uh, you know, that's not me, that's not my sound, but that's kind of what they have to do at the moment. So, are you asking about a musical sound, or are you asking? You said they lost their way. Like you mean musically, or you you don't musically mean anything and, deeper than that? No, musically, and you know they lost their way. They, they lost their, their way. way. Yeah. Well, all right. So we'll dress musically. I mean, musically, you got to figure out who you are. And for me, I didn't know who I was until I had gone through some things. And when I had gone through a lot of rejection, a lot of hurt, it like a pressure cooker birthed something out of me and I figured out my sound, who I was and, you know, what I really wanted to do and what I was passionate about. So I don't know if they've had that experience or if they just need to go back to what, you know, their, their original first love for whatever that might be musically. But you got, you know, you got to do what you love to do because if you love it, then it's going to connect with someone else. I mean, like, look, it, we can bring up Prince. I mean, because to me, like, Prince was gifted. Now, he wasn't anointed, even though I felt like he was. He wasn't because he didn't surrender his life or his gift to Jesus, right? right? But he still was gifted by God. And so I feel like, you know, you've got to surrender your gift and your talent if you're doing music ministry. And then you got to figure out what your calling is. And... You got to love it. And like when 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 people play their instrument or when they're singing, you can tell if it's real, authentic or if it's just they're singing it for the 500th time and doesn't mean anything to them. Or, you know, I mean, like I, I want to feel music and I want you to take me somewhere and, and I want to feel that hurt and that pain that you experience. And I like I know for me, like even though I had gone through some really hard times, I said to God, I said, God, like, if you get me out of this, I promise you, I will give you glory in every situation in my life. And I have. But I also said, I don't ever want to forget 
because I think a lot of people, we forget what we've been through or forget the hard because we become numb to it or we put it off and we don't ever want to go there or feel that again. And we get used to the repetitive life that we now have. But I want to remember that hurt. I want to remember that pain because it drives me every day. It drives me, A, never to go through that again, never to experience that again, but it also shows me the rawness of a true relationship with God, you know, when things were bad and when things are good. He's the same God. So, I mean, that leads into the other part of your question, the B part, which would be, you know, you got to be humble. Um, because, I mean, one thing I learned about Jersey, man, it's like, you know, whatever you do in Jersey, if you fall, there'll be like 20 people that'll topple right over you and pick up the pace. Like it's dog eat dog, it's survival. You know, the New York, New Jersey way. Get what you can get, get it quick, and own what you can own. You know, it is it is what it is, but it taught me that. And I had to also learn to, to let go in my ministry and let God. And that was really hard for me because I, you know, I give 110 and I want to help and do whatever I can do. And I can figure things out. Someone will figure this out. But for a lot of things with me, God was like, no, no, no. I'm working on your character. I'm working on your humility. I'm working on your lo- lifestyle of worship. That other stuff's easy. I can figure that out. I don't, I don't need your help. So I think, you know, this whole coronavirus thing, man, it's like during this season, we got to check ourselves. It's not about pointing the finger. I feel like on social media, we're pointing the finger all the time, but it's like, Check in ourselves. What's our relationship with God like? What is, if you're a dad, how is your relationship as a dad to your kids? Do you know much about your kids? I mean, how's your relationship with your wife? I mean, like, let's be real because the time for fake Christian living is in the past. Like, we can't do that anymore. I don't know if I answered your question. You did <laughs> very much. <so. laughs> Can I may I ask yeah. a question? When when you were just um, just in reference to not living fake, um, in in recent events, I, I've heard Kurt Franklin call out a boycott to CCM Music, and so what I wanted to know um, for you, um, being um, somewhat of a minority in gospel music, being around a diverse culture of people, have you experienced that prejudice or or witnessed? Um, that type of racial divide in gospel and Christian music, um, and and if so, you know what do you think should be done about it, or do you think it even exists? Look, um, I mean, big answer, yes, but that response is deeper than that because whatever I felt is such a small fraction of what other people have felt where there's like really true racism. And I I believe God has, because you have to know my DNA, my DNA and God knew this is, and you can judge me for however you want me to judge, to be judged, but I'm a people pleaser. Hmm. If I find out someone doesn't like me, they are now my number one priority to win them over. Hmm. So where you'll see some people and even pastors and even gospel artists post online If you ain't for me, I don't need you. Like, you know, it's all a self-inflicted Christianity today. It's all about me, 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 me. I don't believe that that is the Christian life that we are really called to have. So for me, yes, I've felt like there have been walls. You know, like, I mean, I had a lot of that when, when before radio played me, you know, there was like one program director that believed in me and then a lot of others that wouldn't play my music. And still to this day, there are some stations that will not play my music. Why? Why when I had a top five with I Got Out, would they not play my music? I mean, I don't know. They can answer to that. But I'll do interviews and they'll call me their uh, blue-eyed soul brother. I don't have blue eyes. I got green eyes. I mean, I know it's just a statement, but, you know, if roles were reversed or flipped, some might find offense at that. Does but that I, bother I, you? I got, no, you know, and here's the thing. God knew that instead of me being a victim or always being so defensive 
and having really thin skin, I laugh at it because now I'm going to find a way where you fall in love with me. Mm. And usually it's just from a conversation, which is what I always tell people to do. You know, if you really care, have a conversation with somebody, like sit down and really find out why they're ticked off, find out what they're passionate about, find out what they've been through, ask them what their story is, and then care, like actually care. And don't just try to wait for a pause in the conversation for you to say what you want to say so they hear you. Listen, like actually listen, take it in. And maybe you'll both learn something, but at least I'm going to learn something in the conversation. I want to know what you've been through. I want to know why you're hurt. I want to know why you're so defensive. I want to know, I want to know all these things. And I, I feel like, I mean, nine times out of 10, I leave a radio interview or I leave an interview or I leave a one-on-one convo where we leave on a much better place where almost like, man, you're my brother. Man, I love you. In fact, I've had some say, man, you blacker than one of my best friends who's black. Like, and I'm just saying that because like, that to me is a compliment because we've connected and you can take the music aside, you can take the preaching aside. If we can't connect, there's no point. You know, I mean, we've got to be able to connect and communicate. And for that to happen, you actually have to care. So, you know, with the whole Kirk Franklin thing and the boycott, um, I mean, he's got to do what he feels in his heart to do. And if he feels God's saying to do that, I mean, I'm not one to judge or question anything, but I know from my own personal walk on a very small scale, yes, I've felt some, re you know, apprehensions. I've felt some rejection. And uh, I've been told by board members of certain, you know, uh, groups that my song doesn't fit the genre, even though it was like a top, you know, 15 song at the time in gospel music. I mean, what, what do you mean? Why doesn't it fit the genre? But, you know, you just keep going, man. I mean, you're not going to win everybody over, but you will win some and one is worth it. And you just keep plowing, you know, it's like my song, I got back. Like I, I literally looked back one day and I was like, like I had forgotten all the things God had gotten me through. I had forgotten all the things he sewed together and mended together and, and all the, the, the things he had saved me from and, and, and all the hurdles I jumped over. And so rather than being bitter, mad, hurt, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm just grateful and I'm thankful. That's beautiful. That was yeah. deep because yeah. <laughs> I wanted to let you know there's so many people that go through so many situations and they done, one and done. You know, they yeah. go through one hardship or, you know, and I think that's one thing I'm, I'm glad you brought into light um, for any artist that's uh, listening right now because everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to like yeah. your music. Um, everybody's not going to fool with you. You know, even though they might be cordial with you, they might never put you on. But you, they, right. and that just being honest, you know, and I think yeah. that was beautifully how you, how you word it. Laugh it off and keep doing you. Be authentic and be humble because at the end of the day, you know what God called you to do. And yeah. I think that that's deep. It just, so yeah, that was, man. Man, somebody gonna be blessed today. With somebody, go ahead, go ahead and uh, pass the offering bucket. Man, just go ahead and pass the offering bucket. Pass the offering bucket. Gave a word. No, man, right and like, 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 I, I mean, I, to add to that, like, I always feel like nothing is by accident, nothing is by chance. I mean, if God knows the, you know, to the minute when I will pass on one day, I mean, He's got it all figured out for you, for me, for you, and so, like, you know. We, we talked before we went on air like about my dad and my dad and I were really close and my dad was dealing with a, a, a he had a blackout and a seizure and a brain bleed and just so much stuff that I wasn't expecting with him and it was really hard and difficult and of course I'm you know naming it and claiming it and believing for his healing um, but it really wasn't happening and for a month almost m month and a few days he was in ICU on a, a ventilator for multiple weeks uh, feeding tube and all this stuff. And, and I mean, I don't want to tell too much about all that whole thing, but like, it was really hard for me to see and watch like him, like a vegetable like that. But then all of a sudden he just like 
kind of came out of it. And they took the ventilator out and eventually took the feeding tube out. And I'm FaceTiming with my dad who like when I left him two weeks ago in a hospital bed, like he was just like out, you know, and now like I'm FaceTiming him, his hands lifted. I'm playing Oh How I Love Jesus with him and we're vibing together and worshiping together. I, I'm watching him sing and I'm like, good God, Lord, look at this healing. This is a healing in the process. And then literally like four days after that, I'm ministering at a church. I get a phone call the second I walk off the platform and I drop to my knees and fall on the ground and just like am overwhelmed with sadness because I found out my dad had passed in his sleep. And I could not understand that. You know, I just could not. It took me weeks to process the anger, the hurt, the pain. And I literally felt like the people that were taking care of him because of COVID, we, my family, my mom, who's been married to him for 51 years, we couldn't be right by him. We couldn't help him. We couldn't feed him. We couldn't rub his hair, you know, whatever. Couldn't be around him. And so that lack of physical connection was hard. And so now you start blaming people. Well, who was he with? Who was watching him? And you start blaming the facility. And, you know, I mean, I just felt such rage and anger. I, I never felt that much heaviness. And that's in spite of all the stuff I'm watching on TV and the news and, you know, the racial divide and stuff. I mean, like that was angering me as well, the injustice with that. But now here I am personally feeling injustice. And I know it's a different scale. It's a different platform, but it's still a raw emotion that I'm feeling that I know others are feeling or have felt. And the, uh, you know, we talked about this new worship song I have called Beautiful Savior. And the first line in it is, you've rescued me. You've completely set me free. And that is, that is what Jesus can do for anyone that's willing. He can rescue you and he can completely set you free. This earth is earth. And earth is rough at times, hard at times, not fair at times, painful at times, frustrating at times. It's not heaven. And... God rescued me because my heart was going down a bad path and I was angry and wanted revenge and I felt injustice and all this stuff. And all I can say is that God can heal that wound. He can restore you. He can replenish you. But it had to start with me saying, God, take the anger, take the pain, take the hurt, rescue me, God. Only you can do it. I may not get answers. I'm definitely not going to get my dad back rescue. And so I just wanted to speak that word of life to anyone right now, because, you know, there's just so much heaviness going on. And there's definitely wrong out there. I mean, I'm the first to admit there's wrong. But we've got to make sure that we go don't go down that angry path, because it's just what the enemy wants. He wants you to go down that path. He wants you to be ticked off, mad, angry, frustrated, because then he can take that division, that divide, that anger, and he can direct it towards God. God, how could you let this happen? God, how? Let that soak in, man, because I'm telling you, God wants to heal wounds, but we have free will, and we have to allow him to heal and bind and root out whatever is going on in our hearts. You are so relatable. Like as I'm listening yeah. to you, I I can relate to your story. My mom passed six years ago and I remember when mm. she passed, I was like, I was praying, I was believing. And when she passed, you know, I was like, you know, calling the doctors, calling everybody, you know, running through my head. Could I have done something right? Could, could I have changed it? Could I have called a yeah. different doctor? And I remember in that moment, the Lord was like, Daryl, you prayed for healing. And God was like, I healed her. She's with me. She's yeah. not in the game. Yeah. You know, and it was like, I had to grapple with that because it's like, well, Lord, you're right. But this, yeah. you know, I'm not feeling this. So what I yeah. want to know from you, because like, you're just anointed. Let me just say that. Like, oh, that, that beautiful yeah. savior song, if anybody hasn't heard it, go out and listen to it. I want to know, what is the biggest misconception people have? You know, I don't really know because I don't know what people think. I don't know what people think of me. Um, 
and maybe if I knew what they thought of me, I could figure out <laughs> a little more how to connect. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't really know how to answer that question because I don't know what the misconception is. I think, I think most people trip on, on a color. I think most people trip on a profile. And even though you may not want to be profiled, I know they profile me and, or some have. And so, I mean, honestly, I don't really know what the misconception is other than, um, I mean, I am what I am, you know, I'm, I, I am a light skinned brother that wasn't, <laughs> I don't do you do I? That, yep. that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't someone that had a choice in the, in the matter, right? I was just born this way. And I'm not someone that's trying to sing other people's songs like karaoke. Um, like I really live this, breathe it and wholeheartedly love it. But I also respect the culture. I respect how it was birthed. Um, but I also love diversity. Like I don't want another Brian pop and I don't want another person that looks like you or looks like me. I mean, I think we're all created unique and I think that's the beautiful thing of the kingdom and I didn't create you. So I should admire you and everyone that God created. But I think more than, more than anything, man, it's just like, you know, strip away the, the, the skin. And I, I really do believe that we have the same heart, but I felt more connected with those that have a heart for God than other people, because, you know, our true DNA is that. And so I can meet people when I travel that I've never met, but all of a sudden it's like, like, like you guys, you know, like somehow it feels like we've known each other for years or somehow it feels like we've hung out a few times, mm -hmm. but I just really believe that's the Holy spirit and we're connected through that DNA. Yeah. You know, that God, God is, God is, I mean, this is kind of deep, but like my dad is a hundred percent Serbian. So like Serbian, you might consider that being white, but Serbians European. And mm -hmm. Serbian is like Yugoslavian. So like when they came to America, they were actually looked upon as less than. Right. So um, I mean, what I'm trying to say is like, my dad's family was so tied to their culture. Like when my dad got saved and then we all <laughs> that same Sunday morning when I was 10, got saved, he had to leave the, uh, what was it called? The Serbian Orthodox Church, which was like a big deal. Like his brother-in-law was the priest. The, s the sermons were all in a different language in Serbian. I mean, like they had their own little clique, their group of Serbians, right? I mean, it's what it was. And when he left and got saved and started going to this charismatic non-denominational church, that whole family rejected him and said, we don't want anything to do with you anymore. And yet we're all still Christians, right? So yeah. like our DNA is, is Jesus. And so bigger than our culture is Christ. And so I had to learn that when I saw my dad get rejected by his own family, you know, um, but all in all, man, love love is bigger than it all. And so even though you go through hurt uh, and rejection, you know, the, the key is not to let it rule your life and own you, you know, but rather let it drive you. And for me, it's driving me to win people over and to show people the love of Christ even more because it's so needed in today's world. Amen. Well, what's your favorite hymn? That's what I want to know. All oh, night. Nice. <laughs> My favorite I'm hymn. I'm a hymn guy. I'm a hymn guy. I yeah, yeah. Hymns. Oh man. What is your favorite hymn? I, well, um, I mean, the two I play like all the time, which are how are my favorites, is "Great Is Thy Faithfulness" and "Oh How I Love Jesus." My wife's is, I think, hers is like the old rugged cross, and um, yeah, uh, but. Man, I, my gosh, I've played so many hymns in my life. I mean, because that was like the thing. My mom, when I was, you know, a 
teenager, I would like practice an hour and a half before school <laughs> and an hour and a half after school. And while like kids were you know, throwing a football and playing baseball and all that stuff, I was like practicing piano. And my mom was strict, man, you know, so like I had to get all that done and she'd write out a list of songs and all this stuff. And every day was a new uh, page turn in the hymnal. So I went through and had to learn all the hymns and all that stuff. And, you know, I was trained well, but it wasn't until later in life when to address like your first question, you know, I, I fell in love with gospel music and soulful music and all that. And I that was when I really fell in love. I mean, I, I admired classical and the old hymns of the church, and I loved watching my mom play and the choir singing and all that. And, you know, I love that. That's church to me. But it, it uh, didn't mean as much until I got a little older and, and really fell in love with that genre. Hey, man. So yeah. I, I definitely want to ask this. Um, First, I have to say this because Dr. Clay's in the comments and she told she's yeah. checking and everything. So Dr. Clay, who is had to teach Bible study tonight, so she's in decency and order for her church, but she had shout to shout out say, Dr. Clay. Man, she really she really wished she could have been on the show tonight, and she said she loves your music. So, uh, Dr. Clay, I said it, and he knows now. So the other thing uh, I have to say, thank, thank you so much for that thank part. You. Shout out to Dr. Clay. <laughs> She's going to get you for that end part. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll, talk to her. I'll talk to her after the show. So um, one thing I want to ask is future projects. What so, is um, some future projects you could let us know um, that you're working on? Yeah, so, I mean, we've mentioned the new worship single that is with Tasha Page Lockhart. It's called Beautiful Savior. Um, you know, not that, like, we revolve around a chart or anything like that. But after about like five, six months, that song has been out. Uh, it's now really kind of starting to connect. And so I'm really thankful about that because it's a little bit of a different shift from what people are used to hearing from me. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not that I was scared to release that or anything like that, but it was just, you know, a lot of people ask, how do you get through these times? Or what did you do during this? Or what did you, and so for me, like I'm a worship guy. So like, why not release something that is worship because praise is awesome and Thanksgiving is awesome and all that stuff. But, you know, I felt like I needed to um, showcase that as well. So that song's called Beautiful Savior. Uh, and then Tasha and I did like a home quarantine video that's on YouTube. If you guys can check it out or pr promote that, uh, just I think type in maybe my name, Beautiful Savior, and it'll come up. Um, it'll come up. Yeah. But it's. Yeah, but it's really cool because, like, you'll see in a square, you know, Tasha singing from her home. And you'll see me at home playing on my piano and, and worshiping and singing and stuff. So that's really special to me that we were able to do that during these times. Uh, and her and I, 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 we also pray and hope that, you know, this song will open up kind of some diversity amongst, you know, our followers. Um to bring us together uh, as a team and to lead some events or services or worship events, which I think is, you know, just needed to bring people together. Um, like we were originally talking about, like let's say CCM and gospel or whatever. I mean, well, the only way is to actually try to bring them together and do it. And so, you know, that's kind of cool, but I actually am in producing uh, for a few other artists uh, right now during these times, because it's kind of easy since I have a studio to do that. Uh, so there's a couple singles that'll be coming out here in the next few months of some artists uh, that I believe in. And, you know, Anybody that myself. Know? No, no, they're new artists. Okay. Um, uh, and so Aaron Lewis, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with his music, uh, but a lot of his writing and production, uh, you know, Kirk Franklin and James Fortune and um, a lot of other artists. But anyway, uh, him and I teamed up to produce a couple things. He's produced and pretty much written most of the things with me as well. So like almost everything of mine, he's, you know, co-produced with me. But as far as like new stuff for me, uh, I have a new single that will probably be coming out uh, early part of next year. But it's going to go back a little bit to like the I can make it 
just kind of like vibing old school groove feel. So it'll be some feel good music. I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I, I definitely could say that. I, I can't <laughs> wait. Um, if you if you're just tuning in, go ahead and make sure you share this um, share this interview and like the Anointed Radio page and follow us on all social media at LV Anointed Radio, everybody. And um, just one, you've dropped so many gems, but I have to ask it before we go ahead and close out. If you wanted to just leave one last word of wisdom, what would you leave? Oh man, I mean, I mean, for my life, there had been so many unexpected expected twists and turns you know how i thought it was going to go down it didn't and i had to reinvent or keep believing or keep trusting and i think i more than anything god is faithful it's not going to necessarily be the timing that you want or expect but he is faithful and he's so good and so rather than getting discouraged in the process uh, or frustrated and confused, which he may use those emotions to propel you into your next or to shift you or to change your perception or to birth a new idea, song, job, invention. I mean, whatever it might be, but let him use you and don't give up. I mean, I know that sounds like so simple, but there were so many times, man. I mean, I wanted to give up before I can make it. We're talking, what, seven, seven, eight years ago? I was about to give up before that. I was about to give up after that. I was about to give up after I got out because I didn't understand. You know, I got out, made it to like number four or number three. I can't even remember on the charts. And there were a bunch of stations that just said they would not play that song. And that really discouraged me. That really, you know, just... I didn't understand. Like I didn't, I just didn't understand. And you, you just keep, you just keep going. Bishop Jake said to me one time, I had one opportunity in my life and I'll never forget it where I was able to go out to dinner with him and just sit with him and Sarita. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, you know, something's changed in you. He goes, I've known you for years. He goes, but something's different. Something shifted. He goes, and I want to know what it is. So I began to explain to him just some of the things I've told you. And he goes, you know, I've learned in life when you're down, you've got two options. You become a victim, you give up, and you point the finger, and you stay down. Or the other option is you get up. And if you get up with all your heart, you trust God, whether it looks good looks bad is your timing or not your timing you trust god and all i can do is do everything i know to do and ask god to bless it and if you remain humble your time will come don't give up beautiful yep you heard it here don't give up i I definitely gotta say mr brian i appreciate you you, you spoke into a lot of situations in my life that a lot of people don't know I'm going through. So um, I appreciate that work and I receive it. And yes, one sir. thing um, I wanted to just say on behalf of the Anointed Radio team, thank you for spending time with us coming on today because the most valuable thing that you can give someone is time. So we really appreciate you. Mm. And like we say to everybody, and we mean it, you are now like family. So you got a Las Vegas family now. So Chicago it, too. Man, it was Chicago Thank too. You so this, much, man. This, this is in Chicago. So <laughs> if there's so, so let's let's have, let's, let's let, just so we can be real transparent and honest and let somebody see truth here and like realness, right? Because I mean okay. your show's all about that. So like when we were supposed to get together last time, you had every right because I messed up, okay, and the communication wasn't there. Your listeners maybe probably don't know this, but you had every right in that situation to say, man, forget him. You know, we had an interview, didn't work out. That's it. You know, like you had every right to be that way, but you didn't. 
you forgave. Of course, I asked for forgiveness, but you forgave, right? I mean, like this is this is the walk. This is the journey. And because of that, I think we had a beautiful moment here tonight. And hopefully a lot of people connected and related to some of the things we said, because we tried to be transparent and honest. And that would have right. never happened if you didn't open that door. So well, I have uh, to add on to that. So just to process, yeah. I've been... <laughs> I haven't been in radio for 20 years. I can't say that. But since I've started Anointed Radio and my faith walk and Anointed Radio was my faith walk because literally God told me to do it. And I was just like, what? Radio? Okay. And I've been doing it for three years. And one thing I've learned in the industry, and I've dealt with probably a lot of your co-laborers in the industry, is that God has a timing and purpose for each thing. So when it doesn't go, you know, because there's a lot of times where I, when I, I guess when I first started radio, I was like, I don't know what to do. Then I learned to trust God and just pray on it because the time that you were supposed to come on, actually, I believe that God wanted us to talk about what we talked about. And that was the, um, that was Mm. talking about the results of Breonna Taylor and how that things have to change and what would take the so it God had its own purpose of things that had to be transparent, what had to talk about, you know, in its own yeah. timing. Because right now there's probably a listener that's listening to us right now that need to hear this week because what they went through yeah, this yeah. week, they yeah. need to hear what you had t- to say. So I always yeah, trust yeah. God. That's a God thing. And I, one thing that you said that was deep and um, I just wanted to just let you know is the person, the most person that you feel like is either difficult or like did you wrong or whatever is the person that needs you the most mm-hmm. i feel like jesus never sat there and, and dealt with the people that just wanted it he he dealt with some people that, sure. that that was difficult and he was still there he didn't sit there and level up to their same level and be like you know what forget you you don't even want to be no he just said you know what there'll be a time and i'm here yeah and that's true love because yeah. if you if you have true love in this walk in Christ, you show it no matter what, not big, not situational. Yeah. So I definitely say it was yeah. it was all it was all a timing thing, and it was a God thing because God wanted you this week to come through, and obviously there was time it was time for you to be dad too because you had to be dad in that moment because I know you you text me and tell me <laughs> yeah. that you, and I understand that moment too. So yeah, I. Like, 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 like they yeah, say, man, like I'm the with duck, it. yeah, everything duck, is timing. Everything take is timing. the water, the water off their back, you know, just let the water roll yeah. off your back and you keep on being you and smiling. Like you said, laugh things off, say up, oh, God, I guess it ain't time. And then be like, mm-hmm. and keep going. But you yeah. know, one thing I can say is out of all the three years I have been, you are the first artist to ever come back and apologize to be like, Oh my bad. Cause <laughs> that shows humility. And I, I could give you that. And it's not like I'm sitting here looking for it because I'm not that type of person. I'm like, hey, you busy. We all busy. Right, but right, right. Yeah. I think it was just is shows the sincerity is when someone could be like, you know what? I messed up. My bad. You know, I really apologize. You know, please forgive me for that. You know, I'm usually on it because that's me. I'm I, I usually yeah. if. I did somebody wrong. I'm gonna be like, "Hey, my bad. I, that was not my, you know, because I was supposed to send a video um, about like last week, and I know they're probably watching this interview right now. And I sent it <laughs> today. So, Amen. Yeah. So it, it'd be right. like, that. you know, <laughs> on God's timing. That's the whole story. <laughs> God's time. But one thing yeah. I definitely want to say is I appreciate you and anything that you have. This isn't a when I, I tell everybody this. This isn't a one time thing where you just come on and you just uh, on and done. No, whatever you have will definitely promote it. We'll, you know, push out, you know, put on our, our social media platforms and tell people about what you are doing because we believe that unity brings change and we could be able to change the culture of uniting having a united front of what everybody's doing in their ministries because you never know what you're doing someone else might want to collab with you because they're in the same area and a lot of times as christians we we try to recreate the will when there's a will already created and we could just come together and make a bigger result 
And yeah. I think that's just the most powerful thing. So we're definitely here for you. We're here in Las Vegas and in Chicago. We got Chris in Chicago. He could get you some Heralds. We're here in Las Vegas, so we could get you some <laughs> M&M soul food and uh, grill and everything yeah. else. So, yes. <laughs> I do not sponsor what Chris just said. He's in Chicago. I like Eminem so we, we love Eminem's out here. Shout out to yeah, Eminem. Okay, too. He's roaches too. Hey, Whoa, we well, love you, Eminem. I love you. Amen. Yeah. Thank you guys. Team so Grits. Much. Team it, grits. Yeah. So one thing I want to just say is um, would you like to introduce your song? We're gonna yeah, which one are we introducing? Um, oh, uh, the, the the worship one or something yeah, else? The worship okay. one. Okay. <laughs> All right, the worship one. All the worship right, one. so uh, you want me to introduce it? Yes, and then after he introduces it, we're, we'll see y'all next week. Um, hold on. What wisdom, words of wisdom I say? Don't go in dark alleys. Um, read your Bibles. Um, it's past appreciation month, so make sure you go show some appreciation to your preach to some to a preacher that's touched your life. It doesn't have to be a pastor right now, but there's been a preacher or a pastor or a teacher that has touched your life. So go out there and speak over their life. And remember, October twentieth, my new song. Um, uh, woke up bless is coming out. Yes, all that good stuff. I'm trying to remember. Remember, Cash App is at the bottom. Um, like the radio like uh, and all, all that. that good stuff. So, yeah, now I think we even summed up all the outro stuff. Now, go ahead and introduce your song. All right, well, thank you guys for uh giving me some of your time tonight and your platform. I appreciate it. This is my brand new worship song, it's me and my girl Tasha. Uh, and we're bringing some worship together because worship will get you through the good times, the bad times, all the in-between times. He'll heal you. He'll rescue you. He'll set you free. And uh, just go somewhere with us right now. This song is called Beautiful Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about him. You died for me. You set me free. Come on, Tasha, help me. Yes. My brokenness. Yes. My pain. Give it all to you, Jesus. Was Was blind, but now I see. And you never, you never gave up on me. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh,